This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer Online from St. Peter's Ipsley this Wednesday morning. My name is Peter McLaren and my wife Christine and I, who are both readers, will be leading morning prayer this week, though I will be leading morning prayer today. We'll be using today the outlines of morning prayer from Common Worship Daily Prayer. Today in our lectionary, we will be specifically remembering the writer of the third gospel, Luke the Evangelist. And again, to make a difference, I will not be commenting on the passage we have from Luke's gospel, but we will be hearing from a famous Christian leader who wrote on Luke's gospel about 1,620 years ago. So, O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. So let us praise God with a song of God's glorious name. O oh Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised. Out of the mouths of, ba out of the mouths of babes at the, at the breast, you founded a stronghold against your foes that you might still the enemy and the, destro and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him a little lower than the angels, and crowned him with glory and honour. You've given him dominion over the works of your hands, and put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the path of the waters. O oh Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. So this day, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O Lord, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and evermore. Amen. And our Old Testament canticle set for today is a song of the word of the Lord. And this comes from Isaiah chapter 55. And it's very important for me for two special reasons. One, I learned most of this passage by child, as a child by heart, in the authorised version, obviously. And it's stuck with me ever since. And secondly, the last two verses that we read are actually inscribed on the back cover of my Cornish Bible. So Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 11. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. 
Let the wicked abandon their way and the unrighteous man their thoughts. Let him return to the Lord who will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and snow come down from heaven, and return not again but water the earth, being, bringing forth food and giving life, seed for the sower, bread for the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth from my mouth. It will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I give it. So return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. And I expect you did notice that my reading of the passage from the lectionary did drift into the authorised version at times. We now come to our Bible reading, and as it's in Luke's day, we're reading from Luke chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. But let me first give you a brief uh, introduction to the book of Luke. Luke was a dear friend of the Apostle Paul, and is mentioned by him three times in his letters. Paul describes him as the beloved physician and in his second letter to Timothy as his only companion in prison. He's believed to be the author of the gospel and that of the Acts of the Apostles. And Luke's narrative of the life of Christ has a pictorial quality and shows a sequential pattern from the nativity through to the death and resurrection. As a Gentile, not that is a non-Jew himself, Luke makes clear that the good news of salvation is for all, regardless of gender, social position or nationality. Traditionally, Luke is said to have written his gospel in Greece and died about the age of 84. So the reading this morning is from Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 12. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Pray therefore earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the labourer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house, but whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. 
heal the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter town, a town and they do not receive you, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come. I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of Sodom than for that town. Now our reading and comment this morning comes from one of the great leaders of the early medieval church, Gregory the Great. And he lived from about the year 540 to when he died, which is supposed to be in 604. So he lived in difficult times. And one of his great accomplishments was that he was a great sender out of missionaries, including the person we know now as Augustine of Canterbury with his 40 monks to preach the word of God to the English. So let us hear what Gregory has to say. Our Lord and Saviour teaches us sometimes through what he says and sometimes through what he does. For his deeds are teachings in themselves. Because when he does something, without even commenting on it, he is showing us what we ought to do. For example, according to Luke, he sent out his disciples to preach in pairs. Because the precepts of charity are twofold. To love God and to love our, not, our neighbour. Charity cannot exist except between two persons. Love is only possible when we reach out to one another. Hmm, there's some wise thoughts. He goes on. Our Lord sent out his disciples to preach in pairs, thereby implying that someone who has no love for people should never take on the task of preaching. Very significantly, too, is the statement that he sent them out ahead of him into every city and place where he himself was to come. For our Lord follows in the wake of those who preach him. And that actually was a new point to me today. Preaching paves the way, and then our Lord himself comes to make his home in our souls. Initially, we hear words to challenge us, and through their agency, our minds become receptive to the truth. It was for this reason that through the mouth of Isaiah, preachers are commanded to prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert the paths for our God. And that's Isaiah 40, verse 3. But now listen to what our Lord has to say after sending out those who are to preach. The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. There are only a few labourers for so huge a harvest, something we cannot mention without sadness, because although there are many who crave to hear the good news, there are few who preach it. 
The world is full of priests, and yet it's rare that you find one of them at work in God's harvest. We accept the role, but refuse the hard work. But as for you, my dear brothers and sisters, ponder well the Lord's command. Pray indeed the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest and pray for us that we may be able to serve you as you deserve, that our tongues may never grow tired of exhorting you, lest having undertaken this office of preaching, our silence condemn us in the sight of our just judge. Gosh, those are words that speak to me. I trust they speak to you. You know, we can still find great truth in those who lived centuries, even millennia, before us. We now come to our New Testament canticle, and that again comes from Luke, and that is the Benedictus. This is the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who's come to his people and set them free. He's raised up for us a mighty salvation, a saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness, and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. We now come to our intercessions. And this morning, because we remember that Luke was a doctor, we pray today for the medical professions and medical issues. First, O oh Lord, this morning we remember those who in this last month have started training, training to be doctors, nurses, pharmacists, audiologists, ophthalmologists, physiotherapists, ambulance drivers and paramedics, and all other paramedicals. We pray that in their learning, they may learn some great truths, not just how to heal the human body, but may they learn of a great healer of soul. And in that light, Lord, we specially ask your blessing on the Christian Medical Fellowship at this time, as, as it endeavours to unite Christian people in the various branches of the medical profession. Grant them your presence and your success, O Lord, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for our local hospital trust. We pray for the Alex 
in Redditch, Worcester Royal, and the Kidderminster Hospital. For all the staff and patients there, we remember especially Reverend David Ryan, as he had heads up the chaplaincy team in the Alex, and those who work and worship under him. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the gifts you've given him for the benefit of your people and the glory of your name. Bless him and all who work in those hospitals, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pray now for our own local medical practices. The people we would know when we met went in. The receptionists. The nurses our favourite doctor, maybe as well our dentists, and those specialised in dealing with feet, eyes and ears. So in a moment of silence, we remember them before God by name. We pray for those in our nuclear family who are unwell or who are dying or housebound. We commend those in our church family especially those we haven't seen for some time, for those with health issues, those with reduced mobility, those nearing the end of their earthly lives. And we especially pray for any of those of our near or far, far families who, as far as we know, have rejected the love of God in Christ thus far. We pray, O oh Lord, for the doctors and medical staff in Gaza at this dreadful time. And we commend the hospitals and places of healing to your special protection this night, this day, and throughout this terrible conflict. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we have the morning collect, and I'll be giving it in its traditional version. Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance to do always that is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll be having now our Lord's Prayer as we say it together. And if you know the Lord's Prayer in a different language, Join with us in that language, for I shall be ending it with a few phrases of the language I know, Luganda. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Emerembe, Nemerembe, Amina. And so, may the blessing of the Lord be upon us this day. And the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And on a personal note, I'm sorry for the problems that have occurred due to multiple reflections on my glasses. I find it difficult to sort that out. But God bless you and be with you this day and every day. Goodbye. <laughs>